Here I've got a nice geometry problem that comes from the 2003 Dutch Mathematical Olympiad. And I must admit the solution that I'm going to present is quite ridiculous, but it is the first way that I saw to do this problem, which probably says a lot about me. And now that we're talking about it, maybe if you guys want to post in the comments what you think maybe the most ridiculous way to do this problem is before I go into the solution and see if you guess right. Okay, so let's look at the problem. What we have here are two squares of side length 12. So they share a vertex over here. And then this one that's rotated has been rotated 30 degrees. And our goal is to find the shaded area. So that's this area right here, which is contained in each of these squares. Okay. So, like I said, now is your chance to think about the ridiculous way that I'm going to solve this and what that says about me and post it in the comments and we'll get going. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put this in the Cartesian coordinate plane. So, this point right here, I will make the origin. So, this is the point 0, 0. And then this is along the x-axis, making this point right here 12, 0. This point up here is 12, 12. And then this point over here is 0, 12. Now we're going to start filling in the rest of the stuff. So notice this point right here, maybe for now, I'll call it P, will be of the following form. So P is going to be equal to 12 times the cosine of 30 degrees, and then 12 times the sine of 30 degrees. And we can see that just by completing this right triangle right here. So if we complete this right triangle, we'll notice that the height of the right triangle will be the y coordinate of P, whereas the base of the right triangle will be the x coordinate of P. Okay. So now we'll use the fact that the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2 to rewrite the x coordinate as 6 times the square root of 3. And then the sine of 30 degrees is a half, so that gives us 6 for this y coordinate. Okay, so now that we've got that, we can erase this p and then write down the coordinate for p that we just calculated. So this is 6 times the square root of 3, comma 6. Okay, great. Now what I want to do is write the equation of this line right here. And so really it's just a line segment, but you could think about it being extended to a line and it will have an equation. Or you could just think about it as a line segment where you restrict the x value inside of the equation of the line. But notice that the equation of this line is very easy to calculate. And that's because it goes through the origin. So all we need is the slope, but the slope will just be the y coordinate here divided by the x-coordinate here. So notice this line has equation, maybe I'll write it over here, of y equals 1 over the square root of 3 times x. Now generally I don't rationalize the denominator, but I'm going to do it in this case because it'll let this term interact with some that we'll see a bit later. So this is the same thing as the square root of 3 over 3 times x, just like I said, by rationalizing the denominator. So let's put that in here right here. So I don't want to make it too messy. Here we'll note that this line right here has the equation y equals square root of 3 over 3 times x. Okay, that's good. Now next up, I want to find the equation of this line up here. So we can use the fact that this is a right angle, so these two lines are orthogonal. So let's put that in for now. We know the slope of this line immediately. So the slope of this line will be the negative reciprocal of the slope of this line. But we might as well use this version, the slope of 1 over the square root of 3, because taking the reciprocal is a little bit nicer there. So the slope here will be negative square root of 3. And now we can use point slope form to find the equation of that line. So that'll be y minus the y coordinate of a point. So that'll be 6. We can use that point right there. Equals slope so that 
that's negative square root of three x minus the x coordinate of the point. So that'll be six times the square root of three. So let's see what that gives us. We'll have negative root three plus times x plus, I think that's gonna be 18. So we get that from root three times root three is three times six is 18 and then the minus signs cancel. So in the end, we see that y is equal to negative square root of three x plus 24. Okay, so let's include that here. We have y equals negative root three x plus 24. And we have one last thing to calculate, and that's the coordinate of this point right here. So maybe I'll call this point Q for the time being, and then we'll calculate it over here. So I'll write Q, and we'll calculate it given the fact that it's the intersection, so I'll write it like this, the intersection of our line y equals negative root three x plus 24 and the line y equals 12. Notice this horizontal line up here has equation y equals 12. So that'll be pretty easy to calculate. We'll just set y equal to 12 over here and we'll end up with negative root three x plus 24 equals 12, which means root three x equals 12. But in the end, that tells us that x is equal to four times the square root of three after a little bit of arithmetic. Okay, so now I'll erase this q since we know what it is, and let's include this point right here. So the x coordinate is four root three, and then the y coordinate is obviously 12 because it's along that horizontal line, which is based at y equals 12. Okay, so now we have all of these parts. Maybe before we erase things and start calculating, let's give names to some of these things. Let's maybe call this thing down here L1, and we'll call this thing down up here L2. Okay, so now let's erase this calculation and we'll do our final area calculation. Okay, so now that we've got all of these parts calculated, we're ready to finish it off. Like I said, the way we're gonna do it is quite ridiculous. And we're gonna do it by taking two integrals. So we can split this up into two parts. We can drop a vertical line from this point right here to wherever this vertical line intersects this line. It doesn't really matter. We know the x coordinate is four root three and that's all we really need. And then we could name each of these areas. Maybe we could name this area A1 in this area A2. And then let's notice that our goal area, which I'll just call A, is A1 plus A2. But now A1 can be rewritten as the integral of this vertical line equation minus L1's equation. This vertical line equation is 12 and L1's equation is that over there. So we have something like this. This is going to be the integral from zero to four root three of 12 minus root three over three times x dx. Again, we've got our top curve minus our bottom curve. Okay, nice. And now we'll add that to the area two, but in this case, L2 is our top curve and L1 is our bottom curve. So we have the integral from four root three to six root three of, so our top curve is that, so that's minus root three x plus 24 minus the bottom curve, which is root three over three times x, and then dx around the whole thing. But maybe we should do a little bit of calculation here before we get going. Notice this can simplify to 24 minus, let's see, that'll be four root three over three times x when everything is said and done. So now let's get to the final calculation. So this is going to give us 12x minus the square root of three over six times x squared. We need to evaluate that from zero to four times the square root of three. There I just took the antiderivative and plugged in the endpoints. 
that's not too bad. Then we've got something similar over here. So let's see, that'll be plus 24 times x minus, that'll be two times the square root of three over three times x squared. Again, we need to evaluate it on those endpoints. Those, so that's four root three and six root three. So we've got something like that cooking up so far. Okay, so let's notice when we plug in 4 root 3, we'll have the following simpli simplification. This will give us 48 times the square root of 3 from this term minus, well, let's see if we square this, we get 16 times 3. So let's write this out so we know exactly where it's coming from. So we have the square root of 3, 16 times 3 over 6. Now let's simplify. So notice this 16 can be rewritten as, I think maybe it's best to rewrite it as eight times two. And then this two and this three can cancel this six. So we're left with something like that. Okay, now we'll have something similar over here. So this will be plus 24 times six root three minus four root three. So that'll give us two root three multiplied by 24. We have 48 times the square root of three. Okay, so that's looking good. And then what do we have for this term over here? So that'll be minus two root three over three. And then we need 36 times three minus 16 times three. So that'll be from squaring each of those terms. So let's see, 36 minus 16 is 20. 20 times three is 60. So this is indeed equal to 60. But then we can simplify. Notice that the 60 will cancel with this three down to a 20. So let's see where we're at. We have 48 plus 48 root three. That gives us 96 times the square root of three. And then we have minus eight root three here. So minus eight root three here. And then we have a minus 40 root three here. This two times 20. So minus 40 root three. So we've got 96 minus eight minus 40 times the square root of three. So in the end, that is 48 times the square root of three. Okay, so that's our final answer. So tell me how I did. Is this the silliest way to do this problem? What's a better way to do this problem? Or can you guys think of an even more ridiculous way to do this problem? Whatever it is, post it in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.